Hello, my name is Jonathan Kieran. I'm the Programming Director of the Atlanta Film Society. We're currently in the midst of the 47th Atlanta Film Festival. Uh, we wanted to take a little time out to talk as a team, a uh, programming team, about um, anything and everything, I guess. So uh, I'll let y'all introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Aston and I rock. I am the Narrative Shorts Programmer here at the Atlanta Film Festival. And I'm Jenica Carmona. I'm the Documentary Film Programmer here at Atlanta Film Festival. Yeah, so we're going to talk about what all of that means, I guess, in a little bit. Talk about our, our roles in the programming team. Um, first of all, I thought we'd share just our backgrounds, talk about who we are, how we came to be here. <laughs> and uh, um, I guess going back as, as far back as you want, does, uh, when do you guys want to start? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, I'm an independent filmmaker and I've always loved film. And... Um, I've uh, actually worked at other festivals before um, as a programmer and as a um, in the education department of a previous festival. And so I've always sort of been in that world and um, I kind of saw this opportunity um, to work here at the Atlanta Film Festival and it sounded like a great opportunity. I really kind of fell in love with their mission and what they were doing and um, I joined the team in October. So I'm happy to be here and having a great time so far. One of the things that I really like about working um, at the Atlanta Film Festival is that we're all new. Um, I think you came on in July, you came on in October. I came in in October also. Um, I'm actually from Atlanta, I'm an Atlanta native. Um, I moved back, I've been away, and then I moved back to Atlanta in 2017. And um, in the meantime, between time, I've been working on set. I've been in multiple departments. I'm a filmmaker myself. Uh, I pride myself as like a satire or comedy writer. Um, and then when I'm not doing films, uh, I'm a musician as well. Growing up in Atlanta, there weren't as many film opportunities. Like uh, before the, uh, what I like to call the Tyler Perry takeover, <laughs> I, <laughs> the TPT, the TPT. <laughs> um, like literally right before it, um, I actually left because there wasn't a lot of film going on. I was interning at high school at the Alliance theater because that was the closest thing that I could get to working like on a production. Right. So I left in 2008, uh, I went to film school at Temple University and then kind of went here, there and everywhere, worked um, in like community arts, created like community programming for youth and teens while I was living in Mississippi for about four years. And while I was there, I worked with Crossroads, I worked with Oxford Film Festival um, and later on with Magnolia Film Festival. And what I did essentially there was there wasn't a lot of artistic programming for youth and for filmmakers and for artists there. Um, I mean, there was some, um, but I was just kind of in the mix doing that. And so being back in Atlanta and kind of um, looking for a way, something more regular, or I guess that was felt more community oriented or community aligned, um, I kind of wanted to step away from working on set as much and find something that more aligned with my values and uplifting other voices and giving people a chance to um, show their work. So when I saw that the Atlanta Film Festival was hiring, I immediately got on the phone with the one person that I knew that worked here and was like, hey, listen, I know you're working from home, but I need you to get everybody at the proverbial water cooler and tell them <laughs> that I'm looking for a job. And I've loved every single minute of it so far. Like every every single every single minute out of it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so I'm John. I uh, like I said, I'm the programming director. I came to uh, film festivals also out of the filmmaking world. Um, I went to film school in New Orleans, and while I was there, I learned that there was a local film festival which was just about to hit a growth spurt, unbeknownst to me. So I was able to kind of jump on and start volunteering and then interning for course credit. Um, and then I wound up um, in the programming department for a number of years, I think seven or eight out of the 10 years I worked in New Orleans. Um, and during that time, I was aware of the Atlanta Film Festival as being sort of like a, a kindred spirit as a regional festival in the South, programming national and internationally, but also uh, with a heavy accent on local filmmakers. 
Um, so um, I was able to visit the festival here in 2017 while I was still working for New Orleans and was really blown away at the scale of the event, at the quality of the production, the films that they were picking um, seemed very much on the same wavelength of what we were up to in New Orleans. Um, so I, uh, work took me away from New Orleans for a couple of years and then um, when I was looking for a new position again, uh, I found that this spot was open and was really excited about that. And I think there was just kind of... Um, an instant level of familiarity with what the film festival was doing here. Obviously it's a new city, um, a lot to learn about that, like local conditions, right? Like not, not every film festival is built the same, but I feel like there's, when I think about the sort of grounding of what I do and what we do, what I want us to do as a department and what we're, what we're doing now, um, I think there's a lot of similarities between Atlanta and uh, my old job in New Orleans. And I think it's, it's all based around community programming, trying to bring local films into a national and international context, like reaching out to audiences. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been really exciting. I think, like you said, I've been, I've enjoyed it um, so far. I've been on the job since July. So as Aston alluded to, we're, we're hundred percent new film programming department where we're all sort of fresh on the job, which is kind of an exciting position to be in. It's uh... <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of figuring it out together as we go along, and that's been really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think maybe we should talk a little bit about the process of programming a festival. Now that we've been in, through it, yeah. we were at the end point mm. of this programming process, which kind of um, scarily, in a way, is about to begin again. Um, in early May, we'll be open <laughs> for submissions again. Yeah. So it's all about to start over. Um, we're at sort of the top of our year, about to kind of, you know, we're on the roller coaster. Um, but I, yeah, I think maybe, I don't know where to start. There's a lot of handles to sort of grab this subject by, but um, I think we, we should talk a little bit about behind the curtain stuff, like what, what is the process of putting together our festival? What I slate. tell folks um, when they ask me, because they're like, I get, I get one of two um, assumptions. They either say, wow, that sounds really fun or wow that sounds really hard I've actually been struck, I've been struck by the number of people who are like I would never do your job yeah. I've been told that I've been told that by so many people and like is that really polite to say like I feel like you, you can tell like somebody who's like a roughneck working on an oil rig or something like I would never do that that's too dangerous but like a programmer like I don't know I don't know sorry you I mean, got interrupted you no I mean I've been told the same thing and like some of my students at UR it's like we talk about careers in film and like I asked them would any of you be interested in maybe going into programming and like not a single one raise their hand they were like <laughs> not interested at all I'm just like why I love this I think too because like so what I tell folks um and as a matter of fact, I, I won't call him out, but one of our coworkers who said, I would never do your job. And you I probably, oh my God, the mannerism, I think I gave it away. But <laughs> I, think I, was there. I think I was there with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I told him, I said, the hard part isn't necessarily watching all the bad films. It's for me, it's like picking the good ones. So like each week we are tasked to watching about, um, I don't know if this is the same for you, but for me it was about a hundred. Mm -hmm. And so that comes out to be like 25 hours of, you know, gluing my eyes to the screen. Now my eyes do hurt. So that is, that does suck <laughs> like a lot, but, um, you know, so now it's like, um, my favorite part is John gave me the assignment. Like, so out of the 100, you have to pick your top five. And I would always come to the meeting and I'm like, okay, I know that there are 16 films on this list, <laughs> but they're all really yeah, here's good. Here's my top 18. <laughs> and it's like, but, and you know, and I would highlight for like reasons like this is good or this is, you know, like we should consider this. And, the, and then mind you, I haven't seen any of what like the contractors do, which we'll talk about in a second, mm -hmm. but that's, um, but yeah, so like we watch a hundred films a week. And then I pick my top five or my top 18-ish. Um, and then from those lists of our tops, we compare and contrast, like we watch each other's top. And then it's kind of like a tournament, right? So of those top, what are the top five? Of those top, what are the top five? So we mm -hmm. go essentially from somewhere between 3,500 to 4,000 shorts and we have to come up with our top 40. Yeah. 
I think part of what you're getting at is like the when you talk about good and bad films, I appreciate the air quotes because those yeah. are like words that are like I feel like when I've talked to folks about my work who maybe aren't inside the fe- aren't festival insiders, aren't people who program or people who are at festivals all the time, many of whom are, are filmmakers who are seeing this process from a completely different angle. Um, I get the sense that there's the conception that we're um, we're just taking all the good films, right? We're just kind of like, as if you could sort of rank everything from one to 7,000 and say like, well, the top 160 are, are going, right? Right. Um, which I think you got to leave room for the subjective nature of what we do. Mm-hmm. It's the, I don't know, I feel like it's it's the hardest part to get right when you're communicating about this, but it's also, I think it's important to be transparent that like we bring our own ideas about what we want to see in our festival. Right. And they're not definitive, I love being surprised and like thinking like when I whenever I get into the rut of knowing like thinking I know what I want right there's always some film that comes along and blows me away in a way I never even expected to be like you know engaged by a film so but um, when you are choosing those that top 16 or that top 5 there's a lot of your personality that goes into it right and I think that's um, a good thing really because um, that means that we can sort of um, add people to this process Mm -hmm. and there's like consensus building that goes on. I mean, you and I talked a long time about the narrative shorts program specifically, which I think is good because like there's 4,000 people ish, 4,000 filmmaking teams in that pot of narrative shorts, 4,000 people who have submitted their work, who've trusted us with their work. And I think we owe it to them to spend as much time sort of thinking about it and to think hard about it. Um, So Jenica, you focus on docs. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about how the process um, works on your end. I mean, it's similar but different, right? Yeah. I mean, just to sort of piggyback on what you were just talking about, about how a lot of it is reflective of who we are as individuals. And part of what I love about this process is the collaborative nature of it. Like, you know, speaking from a personal point of view, I have a passion for social justice issues, you know, which is why I am passionate about documentary film, you know, because, you know, so many of the films talk about timely and important issues that affect our world today and so um, I have a certain sort of like natural bias towards certain types of films and so I'm naturally drawn to you know documentaries that are putting a spotlight on these issues that I feel passionately about and um, you know that's obviously going to influence the programming but also we work with other, you know, with coworkers and with other contractors who are able to put in their point of view as well. And I, I just value that so much because they give you a different perspective. And they also help me to um, appreciate other forms of documentaries and documentaries about issues that are not necessarily social justice related, you know, directly, you know, but that are important work and beautiful work nevertheless. Um, So I really love that aspect of it. And um, I just want to say, you know, um, that, you know, we received so many submissions and I really, um, I really resist thinking about it in terms of acceptance and rejection and good and bad. Like we just received so many really great films um, and we just have such a limited, um, you know, spot. uh, We we have such limited spots for them. So, um, I just really hope that like, you know, filmmakers know and understand that. Like I'm always trying to say that as much as I can, because there are so many films that we all wanted to program Mm -hmm. that like we just love. And I just, I wish sometimes that they could see behind the curtain and see how close they got to being programmed, but it's just a matter of like, okay, well, how many, you know, documentaries are about, you know, um, sexual trauma do we have or how many political election um themed uh documentaries do we have and we we oftentimes we have a a few of them that we have to make choices about um but we just really receive so many wonderful and you know timely and impactful documentaries and we just we have to make those choices but you know that's the hardest part of our job but um the last thing i'll say is that i really feel proud of our work and like i feel proud of being part of this team, partly because as an independent filmmaker, I know how hard it is to make a film. I know how much hard work and heart goes into it. And like, I just feel proud of like the integrity of our team that like we really treat each film with care, you know? And like, um, I came into it with that value and I was heartened to see that you guys have that value too, that like you don't just 
disregard any submission and like even if it's clear that okay this is you know interesting work but it's not the right fit for this festival mm -hmm. that you know that we always appreciate the effort and the hard work of that independent artist you know and um I feel really good about that, you know, and just like even when we were talking, John, about like sending out the notifications and, you know, letting those notifi uh, letting those filmmakers know who made it like to the closer round and all right, that. Right. Like, um, and, you know, not everybody receives it well because, you know, yeah. not getting in always hurts no matter how nicely you phrase it, yeah. you know, but like I just feel like good really good to be part of a team that like values that and that has that sort of artistic integrity, you know, yeah. so... Yeah, I think one thing to stress in terms of the way I would describe our role to anybody, um, we're not, the job of the programming department isn't to act like, you might think of us like a filter, right? That we're just like filtering out the films that don't belong and like letting the ones through that do belong. But I think it's really more individualized than that. Like we, I think the challenge of this job, like when you're talking to people who are like, I can never do what you do. Like, how do you not wear out your eyeballs? Like, it's true, but I think the in addition to just sitting with films for hours a day, um, I think one of the more difficult parts of our work is sort of coming back to that place of taking every film as it comes, mm -hmm. taking every film on its own terms, mm -hmm. starting up the little screener that's on your, you know, as big a screen as you can fit on your desk and um, trying to parse out what this film is trying to do and what it's trying to tell you. Um, that's a lot different than um, I think maybe what might be the perception of what we do, which is to say like, this film's not good, this film is good, you know, <laughs> like making some sort of yes or no distinction. It really is taking all of the films that we've seen in our lifetimes and all of our life experiences as well and trying to um, develop a, a critical faculty and develop an awareness of what an audience is going to respond to, um, not just an audience, but our audience in Atlanta specifically. Um, what we want to elevate in terms of what we think is at the forefront of the form, where we think filmmaking form might be going, and like Jenica said, like what um, in either in the case of docs or or um, narratives or other forms of film that we show, experimentals, animated, um, what we think is engaging with the world in a in a productive and enlightening, engaging way. Um, so I do want to take some time to sort of give the kind of diagram of our process. Cause I feel like that's another place that like, not everybody knows that like, it's not, it's not very um, laid out in the festival world. Like it's kind of hard to find like transparently laid out information about how a film programming team does its work. So um, you guys both alluded to um, contractors. Um, so it's not just us. We're not the only ones watching films. If it were, yeah. we'd be not here because we'd be underground <laughs> we would be, um, or we'd be like hospitalized. So to put this in context, we get, um, a number you, you'll hear um, quoted if you look at our um, our website is uh, 9,000 uh, submissions. So that's um, films and screenplays packed into one. Um, we got about 7,200 films submitted to us for the 2023 festival and uh, the other 2,100 or so is um, screenplays. So that means that we've got 7,200 films at the end of the year um, that we're ultimately responsible for. Uh, and so we use a lot of help in that process. And so we have contractors who are folks that are um, paid contract folks that work for us seasonally, um, typically starting in the summer, winding up at the end of the year. Um, and then we also have volunteers. This year we engaged, I believe, 120 or so volunteers uh, to do screening for us. So it's important to map out how all of that work gets organized because you might think of that um, well, I'll tell you what it is not. <laughs> Let me be clear. It's not a pyramid where like volunteers are down at the bottom, then contractors are up here, and then there's like the three of us, and then there's like me up at the top, like the overlord or whatever. Like I'm like the I'm like the eye on the back of the dollar bill or whatever. Um, what we do have is a, a lot more collaborative in nature, and it's sort of like it's kind of like a, a bunch of streams kind of running alongside, um, and um, every stream is um, a group of people out in Atlanta or in the case of some of our volunteers are pretty far flung. They could be across the country um, watching films and sending us their feedback. Um, that's sort of scored feedback about like, here's, here are some dimensions um, and we can talk about our score sheet and what those dimensions are, but um, sort of quantified feedback, that's a score. And then there's also qualitative feedback, which is written down basically do you think this film should be in the Atlanta Film Festival? Why or why not? Pretty basic question, but we invite them to answer that, you know, at length if they like. 
um, to give us feedback on each film. And so our volunteers will watch that film. Um, either a contractor or one of us will watch that film. And then if uh, we decide or a contractor decides that that film should get some more consideration, then it'll be watched a couple more times by us, by contractors. So uh, every film gets watched by somebody who is our staff, either us or a contractor that we've you know gone through a process with to make sure that they're aligned with the values of the organization and that they're gonna put those values forward as they do programming work. Right. Um, so it's not just like, oh, we kick everything to our volunteers, <laughs> screeners, and then like the ones that they like will go ahead and watch. Like we spend a lot of our year watching films and that's because we're doubling up um, which is not, to my mind, wasted effort. It's really the more eyes on a film, the more feedback we get for that film. They're like data points, you know, and they map out what this film is and how it could play a part in our program. So the more eyes we get on a film, um, the more rich our sense of that film is and what its potential is within our program. Um, so definitely wanted to map that out. And I, I feel like sometimes I feel like drawing <laughs> like diagrams and like drawing in the air here. But I think, um, you know, I've heard... Um, Filmmakers, especially who um, talk about our um, festival or other festivals, seem to have this idea that like, oh, we're just making our volunteers do everything, yeah. and then we'll come along afterwards and be like, oh, okay, I got, I got a couple minutes, let me watch this. You know, um, it really is a group effort, and it's not um, hierarchical, really. I mean, we are the ones making programming decisions in the end, um, but you know, there's a process that allows as many people to weigh in on a film. Um, before it gets to the point of a, a yes or no decision about whether it's in the program or not. A question that I receive very often is, um, I always get asked if I watch the film all the way through or do I stop it at the two minute mark, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's advice that filmmakers get in school all the time. It's like, if you don't captivate them in the first two minutes, they'll turn it off and go to the next one. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for everyone. I'll say that we watch ours all the way through. As John was saying, like if a volunteer, especially if a volunteer is like sings their praises, then it's like, okay, then I trust that I'm gonna watch it all the way through. If a volunteer is like, oh, this might be problematic, then I'm gonna be like, well, what's problematic about it? <laughs> I'm gonna watch it all the way through. And so I think um, because even as filmmakers, right, it's like, what do you mean you turned it off after the first yeah. two minutes? It gets you know? really good at minute eight. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also watch um, everything all the way through because you just never know like what's going to happen, you know, and I feel like watching the whole thing gives you, it's, in a way it's not fair just to watch like just beginning because it's like you don't understand like unless you see the whole thing kind of. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I really think it's important to honor the filmmakers, you know, by like, really taking the time and without distractions, I'm like really, you know, focused a hundred percent on their film and giving it, you know, proper consideration. So something yeah. else that I want to point out too, because I think, um, captivating means different things for different people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think, um, sometimes there's a lot of emphasis on making those first two minutes interesting or a lot of, you know, and, and I think that because it's, it's, it, forces a film into a structure that doesn't always need to fit sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason uh, that we watch backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. Another question that we get often, guys, is um, how would you describe how we group the films? Do you, uh, folks ask always like, do you look for like, okay, we need horror films, so let's look for horror films, or... And you're thinking yeah. specifically about blocks, like yeah. screening blocks, yeah. Because right, right, right. we see films, we just see a flow of films, and then yep. this year, I mean, this isn't all, always the way it goes, but this year we just kind of programmed everything. We were like, this is these are all the short films we're gonna take, and then you have to do the additional work of trying to figure out, like, is this short film gonna go into a block? Is it going to go in front of a feature? Right. Like, what's the place for this specific, you know, eight to, 25 minute film where's it gonna go yeah so yeah that's a whole other step um, yeah and I think in terms of what what we do I think this year you know this is a place where you can kind of play um, I think this could be different this year I, I think I don't feel the need to be like this is absolutely the way it needs to go every year this is what people expect and this is what right, we're right, giving right. them out of a block um, the way that appeals to me to do it and I think this is the, what we kind of landed on this year was um, to find thematic links that 
cut across genre, right? So mm-hmm. instead of being like, I mean, sometimes it is good to like let people know what to expect. I think from a marketing standpoint, like our, <laughs> our marketing department might like it better if we were just like, just put a horror block, dude. Just like make it comedy, you know? Like, um, yeah, because people ask us, they're like, what's like a good comedy block? And we're like, well, the one that's pretty has the funniest film, or like this one's pretty funny, and they're like, but that it's not a comedy. Like, well, there's a horror film in there that made us giggle, like, whatever. But, yeah, I think what we're doing on the narrative side especially is, like, what what are the themes? Like, we have, um, for some reason, we have, like, a very, like, women and men thing going on. We're being, not gender normative, yeah. but I feel like we have a block called Mad Men, which is all about, like, men and, like, machismo and, like, male rage and, like, that kind of thing, which is, you know, something that is on people's minds and should right. probably be dealt with in uh, in many forms, but in, in film and in art. Um, we have Women in Trouble, which is about... Um, women in Trouble. <laughs> it's about... Like, um, it's, it it has, is our thriller block. It is our thriller block. Right. Kind of. It's got thrills. It's got a little bit on the horror side, like, but it's we didn't group it as that. We sort of called it by this thematic sort of name. Yeah. Um, we have Late Night, which is like everything weird, which cuts yeah. across animated music videos, sometimes experimental, narrative, episodic. Like It's kind of everything... In there but it's the the denominator is like weird stuff like yeah you know mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you can speak to that on the doc side Jenica you do doc shorts as well as features so like when you think about block structure what's what's that about well I remember working with you and just going through our selections and trying to like figure out how we were gonna group them together and you know one of the blocks was um, looking back and we just we happened to find these common themes in these films um, where, you know, it was all about these, um, these people who were just reflecting back on previous experiences, um, and sort of, you know, um, reflecting on their journey towards healing or towards a new beginning. Um, so that's how that one kind of, you know, came about. It's just like, we, we happened to find like this group of short films that all seem to fit in that same idea. Um, and, um, so that one really came together nicely. And then, um, there was another one that we saw um, a sort of common theme of families, um, whether it's like, you know, families that you're born into or families that you find and create. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and families, you know, I use that term loosely because that could mean different things for different people. And like, um, you know, uh, so, you know, we, we basically sort of go through all the films and, and, and try to extract what are some common themes here that are going on and we try to group them and um, coming up with, you know, names for that was fun. <laughs> I know you didn't like the one I did, but I thought I, I thought it was really funny. <laughs> Which like, one did I not like? Um, where are you from? What you be about, you know? <laughs> right, right, the blurbs. Yeah. That's always blurbs. at the point, it's like the very last thing you do and you're just like, uh, well, maybe this, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's fun to like, you know, just go through and like um, try to piece them together and like, um, like designing anything, it's, it's really design is what it is. It's like, okay, thinking about, you know, um, you know, what things are going to, you know, go nicely together with each other and, you know, what are the common themes? Um, so I really enjoyed doing the blocks with you. Actually, it was, it was like a lot of fun. So, well, yeah. with the doc, I feel like uh, maybe this is goes for narratives too, but with docs, especially, I feel like one way of distinguishing documentaries is not just about their topics, but about their kind of, I don't know, point of view or their like mm-hmm. positionality to use a very like school word, but like, <laughs> you know, some docs are first person. You're really like seeing through the eyes of, of um, a narrator or, or whoever is sort of um, making the film. There's a lot of like uh, docs that are, there's like self inserts, right? Where somebody will like, the person who's making the film will be on both sides of the camera, right? Yeah, and you can hear um, them talking to the subjects. Yeah, yeah, especially if there's like personal stories. We see films, um, I think in that looking back doc there, uh, block, there's a, um, there's a film in that block that's um, about a, a young woman's relationship with her mother and yeah. she's very much in the frame, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like there's a way of like dividing things where it's like, what's the point of view like or what's the mm-hmm. sort of methodology or... Yeah. Um, we do that in shorts though. We do. In like, narratives? Well, yeah, in narratives, thank you. Um, because like you were just talking about women in trouble. Um, I was saying it was thriller because it was woman led, but it is also, it leans towards that darker side. Um, I actually look at it as like playlist building. Love that. It feels a lot like a playlist. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot like, you know, it's movie night. So it's like, we're going to watch all of these thrillers together. We're going to watch all of these um, action movies together. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we have Home Away, I think was probably, I I got feedback that that was a favorite block. And even 
um, our Georgia shorts this year. We had a vlog specifically for Georgia shorts, um, but they were all coming of age stories. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whether they were coming of age like in an elderly age, at an elderly age or coming of age like still in high school, it was still at a, a, um, a turning point in someone's life where they're entering another chapter, mm -hmm. right? Um, and Home Away, the one that I brought up was, um, that was the one where they were all like, they followed, they were very close, they were, they were like portraits. You're following this one person the entire time. Mm -hmm. And um, thematically, that one was about like finding a home somewhere else, whether like home was far away or home was in another person mm -hmm. or finding home like in my own body. Um, I think that, and, 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 and it wasn't intentional as we were, that was just something, again, it was just on people's minds. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's kind of how we end up creating blocks is just find, you know, finding these ideas that is kind of on folks' minds and finding a way to connect those filmmakers together in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this conversation. Peace. <laughs>